a delivering God. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. The problem in the in the church is secret bondage. It's the problem we have learned how to how to look how to dress over top of, shout over top of our, our mess. Amen. And we secretly go home and most of us are bound by that phone in our pocket. Secret bondage. Spirit of lust. Spirit of pornography. Sexual sin, perversion. Secret homosexuality and lesbianism. And it ain't even no a certain age, 8 to 88, everybody's doing it. This was the setup of the web. <laughs> the web was a spider's web to catch you is what it did. And a lot of people are bound, secret sin, secret, secret bondage in the church. The Lord wants you to be free. When nothing is, is battling your mind and, the spirit of condemnation that follows you to church, that keeps you from truly worshiping and lifting up your hands. Amen. The Lord wants to break that off your life. Amen. He's a God of liberty, of freedom. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is liberty. And though we will always have battles, but we, are, we should at some point overcome. Amen. Hallelujah. So whatever the enemy has sought to do in your life, the finger of God wants to set you free. Do you even believe you can be set free? Have you decided to live with the bondage? Or have you decided I can be free? Being free is a decision that I'll believe God. Say amen. Amen. One of the worst feelings is to to be restless in the midnight hour, not able to, 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 have, to have demon forces fighting you constantly, robbing you of your victory and your strength, making you feel like a hypocrite. Satan's, Satan's main goal is to make you a hypocrite and then remind you that you are one. The worst feeling is to have a heart for God. Want him. And be bound in your flesh. This was a dilemma for the apostle Paul. I love Paul so much because I used to love Paul for his strength and all his ability. But as I began to study Paul and look at his life, I began to identify with Paul. Because Paul was a man that had issues even in his flesh yet he was so gifted and blessed and would write the greatest words that you ever read that what that was ever written yet he would turn around and write stuff like when I would do good evil is always present Paul identified our other enemy Satan is the main one but we have another one that goes on we don't talk about that enemy but it's the flesh it's this earth suit that we are bound to. That's why true heaven will be getting a new body. Having a body that doesn't have a drive for sin, a taste for sin, a taste for lust. It's the flesh. So when Satan attacks us, he attacks us in the flesh, hoping that he can use the, use the flesh to bind the spirit. He knows if I can stop you in your flesh, I'll stop whatever God's going to do in your life. Your destiny will be aborted. So we have to do something about this flesh. Amen. Well, what do we do about the flesh? We speak to it. Amen. What do we do about the enemy? We speak to him. Jesus said, whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. You make a declaration in the name of Jesus. And listen, you're not going to bamboozle me about the name that works. Me and my wife was watching a video 
and there was a lady that had came out of the Jehovah Witness and she was she was at least in her 60s she had been in it her whole life and she didn't know it was a lie so if any of your people are in it it's a lie Jehovah Witness is, is an arm of Freemasonry like the Mormons it's rooted in Freemasonry yes the Watchtower Society ain't gonna save you that's why when they come to your door and you try to pull out your Bible to talk to them, they run off. Because they, they, they train that they can't hear nothing but what they believe. But going to come to my door. Come to my door to tell me something, but won't let me tell you nothing. She said all her life she knew that it was wrong, but she didn't understand because she grew up in it. And she began to seek the Lord and trying to get away. If you've ever truly been bound it's very difficult to walk free. It's like it's hard to, because your whole life, all your habits, you grew up in it. It's your whole life. And she walked away. Well, then walk away to excommunicate me. All everybody that know you, it leave you. But she said she wanted Christ. So, well, she didn't even know if she wanted Christ. She just knew that was wrong. So she began to research and study and read the Bible for herself. And, and one day she said she was sitting in her room watching TV. And all of a sudden, she began to sink. She said, I began to, like, I, was, I started going down and it got dark. And she was like, and she said she thought she was having a stroke. And she kept calling. She said, I kept listening to me. Now listen to me. She kept calling on the name Jehovah. Yeah, but the more she called on Jehovah, she kept sinking. Because Jehovah ain't even his name either. Jehovah comes from the Tetragrammaton, which is the Kabbalah. It's what the fake Jews called God. If you really read the Talmud, you will see when they say God, they'll have G slash slash. They won't even say his name. The name of the Father is Yah. Yeah, Yah is his name. So she was calling Jehovah, and she said, I kept sinking. And she said, I felt like if I would have kept sinking, that I would have, she said, I, go, I was going down, like I was falling down into, and she said, I was scared to think that I was going down into hell. She said, I felt like I was going down. And she just kept, she kept saying, oh, oh, save, uh, save me, Jehovah, save me. She kept saying it. And all of a sudden, she thought in her mind, what about Jesus? And she said, I said, Jesus. And she said, I raised a little bit. But because she was not taught that that was correct, she doubted it when she said it, and she started to sink again. And as she began to sink, and she said the light was almost out. She said, I heard the TV, I heard everything. She said, but I was going down. She said she called his name again, and she started to lift. And then she kept calling his name and she came back to the room. And she was confused because that wasn't her teaching. That's why I try to tell y'all, this new stuff that they kicking around, that, 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 ain't, that foundation ain't been tried. That foundation ain't been tried. And, if, and until you get an experience like that, man, you'll fall for anything. People can teach you anything. Till, till, till you get that knock me off the horse, blind me experience, and you find out the right name that brought your sight back. After that, nobody can tell you who he is. Because I know who he is based on what he done for me. Hallelujah. So I want to be free. Come on, say freedom. freedom. Hallelujah. Go over in your Bible. Let me let me get you somewhere. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 16.
This ain't no time to lose your faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 16. I'm a, the title, I got a title. I was actually going to pray. I was going to do some warfare prayer, but I think I'm going to get this word out first. The title, because I'm gonna make I'm gonna make I'm make a few people mad because they think they they think because I have revelation and understanding of who we are as a people that I'm going that's going to reverse all that I know about about God. Amen. The problem with that, if you meet God, if you don't meet God but get a philosophy first, you have no place to go but our own. The Bible says that in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. Meaning that the Bible said the Word was made flesh and dwelled among us. He's full of grace and truth. Meaning if you don't know Him before you get knowledge, you have no place to go but deception because He is truth. He is the cornerstone. Meaning he's the stone that every other stone is built upon. So if you try to build a building without the rock, then you build it on sink and sand. I said he is truth. Truth is the foundation. Like righteousness is the foundation of his throne. Truth is his nature. That's why the Bible says God cannot lie. It's not in his nature. It's not in his makeup. Truth is his nature. So if you get philosophy without meeting him, you have no place to go but deception. So I don't need a book first. I need a relationship first. Are y'all there? So the title of my message, which will have a, a few upset, is called Jesus, That's All. That's it. Thank you, son. I'll call y'all back. Thank you. That's it. That's all I need. This is based upon years it's, it's, you know, we, we live in a generation that don't respect uh, experience. Amen. They want to see it for themselves. Yeah. Generation, you tell them, well, you know which way you go. Oh, you can tell me not. Okay. Ex ex experience is more valuable than money. Because experience will save you money. Experience experience uh, saves time because time wasting is the enemy of destiny oh come on that's what I said wasting time is the enemy of destiny so experience saves me wasted time because if I if, 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 if I can go off of experience then I don't necessarily have to go through every bad thing because I can use somebody else's experience. Say amen. So because we have a, 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 a generation of philosophers and scholars that all go on Google and you know look at stuff and you see these Negroes in the, running in the jungle and you know over naked and you know this uh, new age uh, Christianity or new age religion where Hollywood is okay with it. And, you know, it's mighty funny that that girl, Tasha Cobb, said God told her to do a song with Nicki Minaj. And I sit there and looked at that. I said, Nicki Minaj going to make a mockery. That demon in her going to make a mockery out of Christianity. So then the girl come out with one of the worst pornographic covers that had ever been seen. Worst lesbian pornographic covers after she made a gospel song with an anointed vessel. 
oh yeah, I, I didn't know Tasha Cobb, but I went on Facebook as much as I could get it to. I tried to rebuke her as much as I could. Amen. I said, because there's going to be, it's going to be a mockery. Said, said, said Jesus don't need to mix nothing with the world. Matter of fact, the Bible says to be a friend of the world, you're an enemy of God. That means draw a, li draw a line in the sand. Those that be on the Lord's side, come on over here. If God be God, God ain't got to mix nothing with Hollywood. Why would he go in Satan's house to get glory? Don't need Satan. If, if, if those that believe in the Most High and serve him properly, you ain't never got to tell no sinner to come to him. They'll look at your victory, your joy, your love, and your life, and they'll come on over and say, what must I do to be saved? We ain't got to follow the world. I ain't got to go in no club and preach to nobody. I ain't got to go be with you, sit among you, or nothing. Just live right, and they'll see and glorify your God and want what you got. You ain't got to go down on no level to bring nobody out. We stand on the mountain of God. Letting the glory of God shine. And they're drawn to the glory and they come. And then we explain to them what they must do to be saved. Say amen. So the title of this message is Jesus, that's all. This is coming from a place of experience. Of, of, of 20 something years of experience. Of having that Jesus. The one that knows his name. That Jesus. The one that restores health. I had to find that out. I'm experienced with that name. I know the name I called on. When I was going through an operation. That was, that was iffy. I know the name when growths show up. That dissolves growths. I know the name that I called on when I didn't have the money for no bill. So you're not going to trade me now for something that's not proven. It's the same philosophy that David had that he understood what he was working with. But Saul, being a, a heathen, didn't understand that I'm not going to be Goliath with this slingshot. I'm going to beat him with my faith, with my belief. God might use this rock, but I can't throw this rock hard enough or straight enough to kill this thing. But God owned my rock. But Saul said, no, give me, take my armor. Take what is not proven, is not tried. Because what I would have said, if your armor was so great, why didn't you go out and kill him? So what we use is what's tried. Don't give up your faith. Don't give up your belief. Are y'all there? Now, go to, go to uh, Matthew, what did I say, 16? Y'all there? Now, you have to get, say get, get. your own testimony, testimony. testimony about Jesus. Call him Yeshua, Messiah, Christ, the Christ, the Christos, the anointed one of his anointing. Go into them Hebrew name. Do whatever you want to do, but you better know the one. Because I just seen a cat that's actually, it, it's a false Christ, and his name is Yeshua. Just like there are some cats whose name is Jesus. It's not necessarily the letters. Because when I call the name, listen to me. When I say Jesus, it's not a nebulous concept. The, the one I'm calling is connected to my heart. That if I didn't say his name, I'm connected to him. So I ain't looking for Jesus. When I say Yeshua, I know who 
supposed to show up because I'm connected without words. I don't need an alphabet. So you can spell it however you want to. I know the name. I know who's going to show up. Because it's not just his name, it's his nature. And because I have uh, formed his mind from this word. How can I get y'all to see this? It's like a combination lock. You know, when you go open a combination lock, you're not saying nothing. You're just going to the right. The number's in your mind. You're just going to the left. You ain't said nothing. You're just going to the right, to the left, to the right. Now, because you put in the correct combination, you ain't got to say nothing. The combination of Christ is in my heart. That even when I didn't know his name, he heard a humble cry. He said, that's good enough. This is, a, this, is the, this is how the apostle Paul got saved. Even when Christ knocked him off the horse, he still didn't know who he was. He said, man, I'm the one you kicking against. So it's just about him and that's all. Amen. Say amen. amen. You cats better get that in your heart. Amen. There's something coming. You ain't going to know who's who now. Amen. Unless you know him by the spirit, amen. by his character, amen. you won't know who's who. They got a Christ coming. There's a Nordic Christ coming. An Indian Christ coming. A Muslim Christ coming. They got the Muhadin coming. The Mithra coming. All these are different Christ that's going to be called Christ. That's why Christ said many are going to come in my name. Mean calling himself me. But my sheep hear my voice and another they won't follow. So you can come with a name of my shepherd but I know his voice. That even if you got his name you ain't got his voice. Because his voice is connected to my heart. So 17 Jesuses could show up. It's like putting a baby down in the middle of the room and calling him and see who he come to. The baby's following the voice and know the familiarity of the voice. Oh. So don't get messed up with that stuff. Don't get all twisted with that stuff. Look at this. Now, so you must say, I must get my own revelation about who he is. You got to get it for yourself. Our problem is that we have a more of a African tradition of oral teaching. Meaning we listen to what people tell us and we don't necessarily read for ourselves. That's how we were trained. That, actually this is how we the, this is how we are even as, as a people period. Most melanated people are um, um, call and respond. We talk by call and response. That's why if you really listen to our songs, especially Negro spirituals, it's all about the leader would say something and the people would repeat it back. That's how we talk. But we are, but we have to understand in the last day, because Christ said that um, because the, 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 the way of destruction is broad, but the way to everlasting life is narrow. Meaning, narrow means you got to go one at a time. Therefore, you have to have your own revelation. You can't ride on mama's revelation, grandmama's revelation, brother's revelation, or even a pastor's revelation. All they can do is tell you about what they found. I can only tell you about the treasure I found. But you got to find the treasure for yourself. 
The only reason I'm telling you is so when you find it, you will have a reference that that's it. But if you ain't got it, I can describe it all I want to. But if you ain't got it, you ain't got it. That's what our problem is. We keep trying to make people get something they ain't got. When you get it, I ain't got to tell you to come to church. I ain't got to tell you to love God. I ain't got to tell you to stop fornicating. I ain't got to tell you to get married. When you get it, you got it. Nobody got to tell you when you got it. But when you ain't got it, I'm going to always be describing the treasure. Trying to convince you the treasure is good. The Bible said you taste and see that the Lord is good for yourself. And until you do that, you're going to always be looking for somebody who is God. What is my purpose? Who am I? I got old school faith. When they didn't even know what they had, they say, I got him. They couldn't describe it, but I got it. You try to ask, they say, I feel him in my heart. I don't know what to tell you, but I got it. And in this last hour, you better have him. Y'all there? Okay, now, Matthew 16, 13. I'm going to get here. I want to help you. Verse 13, it says, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he, he asked his disciples, saying, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? Now, by Christ being a master teacher, and knowing things from his father, he understood what they thought. He asked for them. Because it's important for the ones that's following him to know what they're following. This is the reason why many of you all can't stay with him long. Because you knew him by what somebody said. Somebody told you just get Jesus and everything will be all right. And that's why you disappointed. They didn't tell you about discipleship. They didn't tell you about stuff you're going to go through. They didn't tell you to really serve Christ. You signed up to suffer a little bit. All those that live righteous shall suffer persecution. Now, see, you didn't know them scriptures for yourself. So you thought of the benefit package only, meaning what, how, what, what are you going to do for me? As you begin to walk with him, and all of a sudden you begin to get persecuted for the word's sake, which you didn't even know that was in the Bible. You didn't even know why you started going through and having problems. Then you soon, the Bible says they get offended and fall away. Why? Because what they were, they knew Christ through others. You wrote on your mama's Christ, you went to church. You wrote on big mama's Christ, grandmama's Christ. And then really a lot of the way they displayed Christ was wrong anyway. You have a traditional Christ. A Christ that likes form. A form of godliness Christ. Matter of fact, we, we're into this new age Christ. A Christ that only wants to help you. A Christ that's okay with your sin. A sugar daddy Christ. A I dream a genie Christ. A lottery Christ. A Christ of my own understanding. God as I know him. A Christ with no absolutes. A relative Christ. This is the Christ that we have. And so because, and, and we got all of those philosophies before we even knew him anyway. And that's why it's hard for you to understand him because you got other people's understanding of Christ. That's the reason why people fall away when preachers fall. How can I fall away because this Negro failed? My, my, he ain't my Christ. I thank him for helping me, for teaching me. But if he fall, I'm going on with Christ. Because I know him for myself. And if you as a parent could do anything, teach them Christ for themselves. Because when they get in the foxhole, I can't be there and talk Christ to them. They got to know him for themselves. Get your own revelation. We in a generation, we don't let our kids go through nothing. 
That's why they don't know Christ. You know why they don't know him? Because they don't need him. You don't know Christ because you don't need him. But there's coming a time where you're going to need him. I said you're going to need him. Time is soon. Y'all there? Now he said, he said, I'm, he's asking the disciples, who do men say that I am? And they say, say, and they say. Now his disciples said in him, that, and they said, some say. This is where most people's belief is. Some say. You say, show me, show me your belief. Give me, give me, uh, give me some foundation of your belief. Well, well, my, my, my preacher said, well, my mother said, some say. Did you understand that anybody that studies Christ but don't know Christ cannot introduce you to Christ? They'll introduce you to the study, but they don't know him. That's like me looking in the math book. At the at, at looking at the um, the problems, but not knowing the equation. I don't know the answer, but I can tell you what the fraction is. But I don't know what the answer is. This is what we have. They study in the book, but they don't have the answer. Talk back to me. And and, and he says, some say thou art John the Baptist. And, and some say thou art Elias, and others say you Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. What are they saying about him now? You live in a world where the Muslim, the Muslims say he was he, Islam said he's a, he's a prophet. He was he was a good prophet. Uh, the New Age says he was he's, he was the the New Age says that he was the one that found the way. That's why they call it Christ consciousness, meaning he was the first one that found the way to universalism. The Bible says he is the way. No man can come unto the Father except by me. But we have another Christ that Paul was talking about that we have in this day and age that says he, he just found the way. No, he's not the path. He is it. Y'all there. But if you don't know Christ, then you'll be thinking he's found a way. So he's the new age Christ. His name is Mithra, if you want to know. The Muslims Christ, the good prophet they talking about, the one Farrakhan be talking about, it's the Muhaddin. These, they, these are not the son of God. They are just teachers. Well, then that's the same thing as uh, gurus. He says, listen, he said unto them, that Christ is saying, now I know what they say, but who do you say I am? See, some of the, some of the Hebrew Israelites don't even believe in it. So if you don't know Christ, they reading the Bible, but don't believe in, 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 in the Messiah. Some of them believe in him, but they don't think he's the son of God. Some of them believe in him, but don't think he was virgin born. This is why Paul was very careful to tell you that if anybody come preaching anything other than what the apostles preach, let them be cursed. That's why Christ was very careful to, to tell his disciples who he was. Are you there? Now listen, I gotta go. Look, he said, he says, they said, now then listen, he said, but whom do you say I am? And Simon said, answered and said, thou art the Christ, the Messiah. Say Christ, Christ. Christos. They have a problem with that. What is the problem with letters? There's a definition. It means, it means anointed one. The one that's anointed, meaning the one that was smeared. The one where the oil was smeared upon. 
Why do we got to be technical? Because Satan is in a technicality. He, oh, that's what he did with Eve. God didn't say that if you eat of this tree, you ain't going to. See, you're technical. Now, technically, he was right. They didn't surely die right there. But they died spiritually. So, 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 so Satan will always look for a tech and get you over here arguing about a tech instead of understanding the intention. The intention was what Eve should have said, well, whether we die or not, the most High said, don't touch it, don't eat it. So I don't know what will happen, and I ain't gonna even, I ain't gonna even meditate on what will happen, because if I meditate on it, I'm gonna want it. So you know what? I just ain't gonna mess with that and, and buy. <laughs> Satan is robbing many of y'all of y'all faith on a technicality. Let me help you. Well, 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 God was really real. Why he's preaching his father? Well, God, well, 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 if it was wrong, then why would God create me this way? Tech. Now, the reason why you think that way is because your philosophy, you got your philosophy from somebody else. But if you would have got in the word, you would have seen that he made them male and female. It don't matter what nobody say. I can read that for myself. But if I don't have that reference, then I'm going to lean towards what they say. You got to know for yourself. See, I don't want you, listen, I don't want you to tell me whether having sex out of wedlock is wrong. I'm glad you said it. But you know, whether, it's, whether you say it or not, I need to know if it's wrong. Because I'm not going to stand before the Most High with what you said. I'm going to stand there with what he said. So I need to know him for myself. Because if I'm going to pay the price, then don't let me be tricked and pay it. Amen. Are y'all there? And look at this. I got to go look. Look, now I'm trying to get somewhere. And Simon has said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee. He said, well, why are we coming to church? Why are we hearing a preacher? Why are we hearing a teacher? The teacher's only telling you about the treasure. But he cannot reveal to you who he is. That comes by relationship. I'm going to bless you. You want me to bless you? Uh, my house, my, my, my son, my, my sons, um, well, that's not, that's not a good one. That's not a good one. Let's say, uh, um, no, it's not a good one because they know me. So they could tell you about me because they know me. But there are people, like there are people watching me on the internet all the time, and they know Pastor Steve. And they look at the internet and they think because they see me, I'm familiar. They know my church and my name and my wife's name and even my children's name that they know me. So they'll go out, you know how people do online, and talk about you like they know you. But they don't know you. They know of you, but they don't know you. So if you ask them about me, they only can talk about surface, superficial things. But they can never go in depth because they don't know nothing deep enough about me. But if you go and talk to my wife, who got a relationship with me, she would say, oh, yeah, he like this is the way he is. This is the way he talks. This is the way he acts. This is the way he really is. Because she has intimate knowledge of me. So most of our problem is we have a secondhand knowledge of Christ. Christ based upon church, based upon mama, daddy, based upon grandmama, but we don't know him for ourselves. And see, if you don't know him for yourself, you, 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 in, you, you are in danger of mixing something. You'll mix in something else. Y'all want this? Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm listen. I'm trying to show you. If you go to AA, if you go to 12-step program, they couldn't be personal with who he is, so they had to say higher power. Well, who's that? 
Because my God has a name. So you might get off of drugs, but you won't know him. A lot of things can help you, but only one thing can save you. Jesus saves. You can teach me, but he saves. Talk to me. Look at this. And he said, he said, man, he, man, man listen. He said, thou art Christ, son of the living God. And Jesus said, blessed art thou, Peter, Simon, Simon bar Jonah, for flesh and blood had not revealed it unto you, but my Father, which is in heaven. And, 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 and that's, why, that's why the Bible says, you can't even come to God unless the Spirit draw you. Because the Spirit of God, the, the way you got saved was the Spirit of God began to pull you and reveal to you who he was to make you come to him and ask for the gift. But the spirit had to reveal it because if the spirit don't reveal it, you, see this is what we're doing. This is what I said about in the 90s. All of this, we gotta go reach everybody. We just gotta go win the world. We just gotta go to the world. Everybody was talking about going to the world. Them cats that went to the world are now worldly. I'm gonna I'm prove it. If we really had to go to them, then Jesus would have never gave the parable of the man that found the treasure. He went looking. He found the treasure. The treasure was hiding. See, many, see, most of our problem is we, we think of church as having to, we have to make Christ palatable for those that are not being drawn by him. That's why people get mad at me because they think I'm going to try to win them. I'm not trying to win you. That's why I'm not running out there trying to get you. Because I understand that when the spirit starts dealing with you, you could be in Afghanistan in a hole with no church at all. When the spirit starts drawing you, you will find the light. You will find the church. You will find somebody that know him. But when the spirit ain't drawing you, I'm going to have to keep explaining. See, don't be trying to be yoked with people who you got to keep explaining God to. You got to explain it to them because they don't want him. If they wanted him, if the spirit was drawn, see, they ain't been through enough yet. They ain't, see, they need to go through some breaking and some heartache and they'll want him. But right now, they mom and daddy taking care of him. They, they got everything they need. They ain't got no struggle. That's why they don't need him. Then all you're going to do is keep explaining why they need him. But you with him because the spirit drew you. Now how did he draw you? He drew you out of. Out of what? Mess. It was your mess that made you listen. If you wasn't going through no mess, you wouldn't have listened. The spirit waited for you to get enough mess. And then you heard his voice. See, we keep trying to convince. I ain't never debated nobody. Never argue. Don't argue about him. I look like arguing with you. Argue about all, all these questions you got. You know why you got questions? Because the spirit ain't drawing you. See, I thought he wanted everybody. He do want everybody. But we have visitation time. Seasons when he's calling us. There are seasons. That's why I say, don't miss the day of your visitation. There are times when he's calling you. Because the most I understands that everybody comes to me differently. People's levels of toleration of mess is different. That's why y'all be looking. You have a family member. Like, when are they going to come out of there? Lord, how low are they going to go? They, they toleration for mess is deep. It's, 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 it's bigger than yours. As soon as you stepped off the curb and twist your ankle, oh, I got to go to church. I got to get saved. <laughs> see, you, you, you didn't need, see, you had low toleration for mess. Your tolerance was low. Th that's the reason why I don't interfere. With, the pro with, with God's process of getting them to the end of themselves. 
I'm not interfering. You run up on me, want some crack money, I'm, I ain't going to enable you. I'm going to let you know, man, you ain't smoked enough. You ain't smoked enough dope to want this. You ain't done. Go smoke some more. You ain't done. You're tired, but you ain't done. Because, see, when I help you, I'm going to help you, and you're going to feel better, and then you're going to go back to what you was in. But I, I, you ain't ready to talk to me until you are just destroyed. When you just at the point where you just messed up, that's when you're ready to talk to me. Now I'm going to tell you about this treasure. But, see, all that time, y'all run out to people trying to tell them, oh, your Lord, love you, love you so much, and they just still just walking on, ignoring you, talking bad about you. But they ain't ready. They ain't ready. She ain't got a heart broken up. She need two more dogs. She need two more dogs. After this, after the second dog, oh, she'll be ready. She'll be ready. She'll be ready. Yeah, two more dogs. Two more dogs. Oh, he ain't running. He run out. He ain't ready. He need AIDS. He need AIDS to listen. He ain't ready. His toleration for mess is too high. Did y'all hear what I said? So the revelation of Christ, listen, I didn't even say this before. You're drawn to Christ. The Bible, are y'all ready? The Bible says he draws us through loving kindness. Loving kindness, tender mercy, right? But if, 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 if I'm going to accept his kindness, then I have to be in a place that ain't kind. That's how he drew you. You was going through unkindness, and you needed some loving and some tender mercy. But in order for him to draw you, that was the place you was in. That's the place. And see, don't, don't, our problem is we think about those that need God based upon their level of degradation or, but, but that's where we miss folk. Because the majority of the people that are truly wicked, are not the ones that smoke crack or do heroin out there in the street. The majority of those that are really wicked are those that think they don't need them. A wicked person is a person that don't think they need them. See, if you don't think you need them, then you God. But a person that might be physically in some mess, they'll acknowledge him faster than somebody, they're just bound. It's called the sin of the flesh. But the sins that send people to hell is the sins of the heart. The sins of the heart are deeper and stronger than sins of the flesh. Because he can clean up the flesh, but the heart has to be broken up. And the majority of the people that don't, that, 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 that don't come to Christ, they think they're too good. Are y'all there? Like the like the like 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 the a publican and the sinner that went up to pray. And the sinner went up to pray and just fell down and said, Forgive me, for I'm a sinful man. But the publican said, God, I'm glad I'm not like other men. Now let me show you. Y'all want to see wickedness? Y'all want to see wickedness? You remember Bill Clinton did what he did in the White House? <laughs> Do y'all not remember that? And then he, he lied, but he finally got caught. And he just started crying and trying to get, be forgiven, right? Now we swear he was wicked, which he is. He's, he's wicked too. But, I, but, but, but you know why we liked him? Because we related to that. Now, we didn't relate to the, what he did. We related to humanity, to frailness, to failure, to weakness. That's why people liked him. Because we related to weakness. Because every man in the back of his mind know, boy, <laughs> I've been weak before. So we can understand that, and that could be redeemed. But remember when the reporter asked Donald Trump, does he ask for forgiveness? 
And he said, why? I don't do nothing wrong. That's a wicked man. A man that don't think they need forgiveness is more wicked than a man who's doing wicked with his flesh. The sins of the heart. I'll go further. Y'all ready for me? Oh, Lord, I got to go further. The Bible says that the prodigal son left home, went, went, ended up in the pig pen, and he had a revelation. I'm going back to my father's house. And when he came back, now the, father, the prodigal son had sins of the flesh. He was presumptuous. He wanted what he wanted. He was greedy. Wanted, he just wanted what he wanted. But when he came back home empty, the Bible says the older brother was I till he saw the son come back. And the father rejoiced over the one that had fallen in the flesh. But he rebuked the older brother because the older brother got offended because the, the one that fell in the flesh had, had been restored or redeemed. And the, and, and the calf was, was killed for him and a ring was put on his finger. And the older brother had an attitude and the father had to turn to him and say, what you mad about? All I had was yours. See, it wasn't the sin of the The older brother was right up in the father's presence with a wicked heart that didn't even want to see his brother restored. So it's not the sins you can see that are worse. It's the people that got the sin in the heart. The self-righteousness that think you better because you've been saved. Or you grew up, you didn't grow up in the hood. And you think you better. No, you just had a grace. Because if the most high would move, his hedge of protection around you, where would you be? Say amen. Let me go. Can y'all understand anything I'm saying? That's why I thank God for realness. I'm glad I'm the way I am. You can hate me, but you ain't gonna change me. I'm glad the way I am. You ain't gotta worry about telling on me. I tell on myself. I ain't never lied to my children. You know, people used to think that me and my wife didn't talk to our kids about where we came from. I mean, y'all got to be stupid. We tell them everything. I want them to know. I want them to know because I want them to know how blessed they are. Amen. That the life they got ain't normal. Not where we come from. I ain't had nothing. Because it's important for them to know the goodness of God. The grace of God. Are y'all there? Let me go. Look, and he says, uh, he says, now, flesh and blood have revealed you, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, thou art Peter, upon this rock, say rock, rock, I will build my church upon this revelation that you got, Peter, that I am who I am. Come on, say I am, I am. Who, I am. who I am. That's the revelation you must get. It's a personal understanding. It's an understanding that nobody can give me. I can talk to you about it, but I can't give you the understanding. That's the reason why salvation is personal. You must invite him. You must invite him into your heart. You must make him your Lord and master. You can't ride on the residue of good preaching. You can't ride on the residue of somebody else's Holy Ghost. You got the knowing. The only reason you're doing as good as you are because of your mama's uh, 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 God. You don't know him. How dare you? You little. You know, these young cats get a little arrogant. Get a little arrogant like they made themselves. You riding on residue of all kind of people been praying for you. You better be glad. You need to start paying, praying back. Pay some dues. For a selfish generation going to school, get education, and look, at, look down on you like they know something. You can't even cook stuff and write. <laughs> you, know, burning, you burn Popeyes and everything, yet you know something. You don't even know what going sweet potatoes. <laughs> yet you know something. Old folks didn't have to have no education. Raise you with common sense. 
They know how to read and count. Read and count. Now we so educated, we so smart. Say amen. amen. <laughs> Y'all know I'm telling the truth. These young cats are so smart. Got their chest, got their head, walk with their head like they got some reason to be proud. You ain't never did nothing. You ain't never fought for nothing. You ain't got no struggles. You know why old folks talk about the snow they walked in all the time? The snow was up to my chest. You know why they talk about that? Because they know you have no idea of what they was doing. You have no idea to walk in the snow with grocery bags coming home to feed you while you up there watching cartoons. That's why you grown Negroes move with these girls and get Playstations. Sitting there playing all day. Because you have no idea of what it is to, to truly sacrifice. That's why I can't listen to your witness. Your witness ain't good enough. You got to get some longevity. That's why I show, show me your knots and your scars. You don't know. You ain't been betrayed enough. You ain't had your heart broken enough to tell me what I need to do. You all knew, <laughs> just knew. Wrap on your neck, still got this tag, you knew. I don't listen to them young guys, I don't listen to you. I don't listen to you, I'll just get out of my, you ain't got them, you don't know enough. Your hands are new, no, no calluses. No, no, you know, you ever been on the job and you, you done, you, you, you been married before him. And he trying to tell you how to do it. Dude, you just got her. It's, it's something about having experience. You old cats, quit letting them disrespect your experience. I mean, letting these kids disrespect your, why are you the mama coming down on her left? That girl, 15. She don't know nothing. She just now starts smelling right. She just came through the stinky phase. You know the stinky phase, the one, the one ponytail right here? That's that phase. You know, the, you know that small purse phase? That's, that, that, she just came through that. She got a small purse, but she ain't got no business. When you get, get you a big purse, girl, before you talk to me. Your purse is small, me. You ain't got nothing in it. You ain't got no business. You ain't got no bill. You don't even need a wallet. You ain't got no dollars. Get you a big purse. Up in this little purse face, right? Tell me something. <laughs> I got experience. And all my experiences ain't good, which means I can tell you something about both sides. How many of y'all today sitting there thinking you thought your mama was hating on you when she told you to leave the boy alone? Three kids and five years later, you think, oh, Lord, I wish I would listen. You know why your mama tell you? Because she did it. That little boy was just like the little boy she fell in love with. Being fast. Y'all know that word, fast. He was being fast. Your mama was fast. Yeah, she was fast. She didn't tell you the whole story, but she was fast. Yeah, she was fast. That's all. She was fast. The dudes that know her, the dudes that know your mama. Them is the ones you, your mama see that the dude and she remember. That's the one when you with your mama and she see that dude, she never say that dude's name. Hey, how you doing? Hey. And see, if you, it, that's the dude because, see, if you're really smart as a child, you look and that's the dude that'd be like, hey, what's, what's happening, girl? What's happening? What's happening? <laughs> he got a reference with your mama. So your mama got experience. Listen, y'all let these kids disrespect. I can't believe y'all let these, this, this old philosophy, this psychology done told y'all kids know stuff. They don't know nothing. <laughs> nothing. They don't know nothing. I mean, when I say nothing, y'all don't even understand how less or nothing it is. They don't know nothing. I mean, I mean nothing. Amen. 
Nothing. That's why I don't listen. Experience. Experience is a wonderful thing. And your job as, as the older generation is to teach them how much they don't know nothing. Because all the wisdom they have is based upon this overly sexual. They only know about sexual stuff. They barely know that. And they know about the wrong sex. Are y'all there? See, you, see, we serve the Christ that's holy. The Christ that don't want you to make the mistake. I thank God for restoration, but he don't want you to make it. Don't make the mistake. I thank God that he's a redeemer. But I don't want him to have to redeem my time because I wasted it. The problem is you're growing up in a world of people who have failed. And because they have failed, they may fail your normal. And that's why they talk you out of your virginity. And make you think something wrong with you for being a virgin. Are you crazy? They wish they could get their innocence back. Ain't nothing work. You can't, ain't, ain't, that's the only thing you can't pay. What you can't give no money for that. But because they have failed, and they sitting over a bitter with some kids, they want you to feel like you need to go out. They be trying to hook you up with dude. Don't be no fool. How can she hook you up with somebody when this is what she got? How can a man that been in prison tell me how not to go? I don't listen to cats that's been in prison. No. When I was out there doing wrong, I didn't go around you. Amen. You can talk whatever talk you want to. You going to talk me into jail because that's all you know. Yes, Let me go over here. This guy been doing wrong his whole life, never got locked up. Let me talk to you. Yes, you, you, <laughs> you lucky or snitching, but you ain't never been locked up. Yes, over listening to convict wisdom. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You young girls, quit listening to baby mamas. Yes. They ain't got no wisdom. I said it. Don't listen to baby mamas. Or you will be one. Why? How can she take you beyond what she got? All she knows is to be a baby mama. She ain't got no other wisdom. Get around experience. That's what I'm talking about today. Experience is the best teacher. It ain't really ain't the best teacher. Obedience is the best teacher. But I'm going to go talk to somebody. That's the reason why me and my wife say all the time, don't be talking to people about your marriage and just got married, ain't got no marriage. What, what they going to tell you? They ain't been through nothing enough to know. There, there's degrees in marriage. You come through levels. First year is what level? That's one level, the first year. You make it through the first year. Five years, that's a level in five years. You go through a five-year level, 10-year level, 15-year level, 20-year level. You still, you still learning. How somebody that five years in marriage is going to tell you about the 20 year marriage? They don't know. They ain't got enough love. They don't even love they made enough to give them a kidney. They ain't been with them long enough. They still thinking maybe I might leave you. <laughs> they ain't going to give you no kidney. <laughs> might leave you. I'm telling you, you won't treat me. You want to test love, need an organ. You'll see who love you. Need an organ and see who love you. They done made it to where you can, anybody can donate a kidney now. <laughs> they ain't got no excuse. <laughs> they ain't even got tested. They, they hope, hope you skip over them. They don't know. I ain't give you nothing. Because they don't they ain't, they ain't, they ain't going to be with you long enough. It's a 20 year marriage. Some longevity. Say amen. All right, well, oh, it's one after one. Hey, Amen. I didn't get where I want to go. Come on, say knowing for yourself. Come on, son. Y'all come back. Say knowing for yourself. And that's what I mean, know him for yourself. The only reason why I'm still in this thing because I, I learned from him for myself. I never took what people said about God. I go look it up myself. I know how to study. Know him for yourself. Quit riding on people's coattail. Amen. Know God for yourself. Because you're, you're responsible to teach Christ to your children. Amen. But how are you going to teach what you don't know? Amen. You cats ought to be having Bible studies at home. Amen. Husband and wife sitting down having Bible study with the children. You single, you ought to get with some other singles and have some Bible studies. 
Quit sitting up looking at Housewives of Atlanta. Go study the Bible. That's why you think like that. You watching horror stuff. That's why you think that way. You watch that horror stuff, you're gonna want, that's all you're going to want to do is dress like that, look like that. And you think that's good because you watch trivia all day. <coughs> study the word of God. Find you some friends and study the word of God. Get off Facebook gossiping and just looking and met me. Study the word of God. That's how you know him for yourself. You got to sacrifice some time to be with him. Did you hear what I said? Do you even have a Bible? That's an indictment on a Christian. Ain't got no Bible. Come to church without no Bible. Well, I got it on my phone. Well, I got it right here too, but I got four or five Bibles at home. What happened if the internet go down? Do, would you even know how to flip through a Bible? You wouldn't even know where you say go to Malachi. Oh, look, you don't even know. See, it's not even enough to, to see. You can find it on the phone, but see, you got to get familiar with a book that you can flip and know where stuff is, know where stuff is. Do you have one? It's an indictment we come to church with no Bible. Don't be buying no church Bibles. We shouldn't have to have no Bible for you back there. You should have a Bible. Get a big one. <laughs> get you a Bible. Engrave it. Get your name on it. Amen. Printer no Bible talking about I want God. You don't have his word. You should have the Bible on tape, Bible on CD, Bible on your phone where you can hear the Bible. That's how you begin to learn him for yourself. That's how you can judge what's being preached. I didn't tell you take what I said. Judge what I say. Don't just take what I say. I ain't no, I ain't no a, a, a cult where I tell you to take my word. No, you judge what I say. But how are you going to judge it if you don't know? You don't know if that scripture say that or not. People take, people, people take the word out of context all the time. That's how false religion is started. Say, know it for yourself. You shouldn't have more DVDs than movies about God. For you to know God, you got to change your lifestyle. What are you absorbing 24-7? How you know every movie out? But have no scriptures in your, in, in your heart. Amen. Say amen. amen. You ain't going to stop fornicating without the word. Amen. Every Christian know, if, if you've been walking with God long enough, you know when, you, when, you, when, when God delivered you, it was the word that had to keep coming up to convict you over and over again. The word has to convict you. I've been through those word battles many times. And the Lord brought me out with a word. You're not going to stop smoking weed with no word. You ain't going to stop fornicating without the word hidden in your heart. That's what, that's what God uses to deliver you. I remember my greatest battle was when I first started walking with the Lord. And I walked in the store, and I, and I was actually thinking I was going to get a pop. And as soon as I got in that store, I heard a voice say, get that Budweiser. I heard it like right, standing right there. I wasn't battling it until I heard that voice. It's temptation. It was a spirit that knew me, familiar spirit, because that was the spirit I used to drink, and then when I used to drink, uh, the Lord delivered me from it. But the spirit didn't go nowhere. It went over there. But it said, I'll go back. I'll, I'll catch him. I'll catch him. I'll go back. The Bible says when the evil spirit is cast out of a man, it'll go away, but it'll come back Amen. to the same house Amen. and see if it's swept, but it ain't full. It's empty. Amen. Ain't no word in there. I went to reach for that. I went to go to the freezer, and all of a sudden, I went to reach, and, and, and it was like, I was like, no. Nah. And I was in a battle in the middle of the store. The guy at the counter was looking at me. I know he thought I was crazy, because it, it was a real war. Because Satan, I knew Satan was saying, I knew what Satan was saying. He said, if I can get him to taste this again. See, because it only take one. It only take one. If I get him to grab this, he'll go, I'll get him back. I'll, he'll go back. And I was in a battle for my life. If I would have grabbed that bird that day, I believe I would have backslid that day. Yeah. Wouldn't have been no her. Wouldn't have been no destiny ministry. <laughs> Wouldn't have been none of that. And I remember I was in a dilemma, man. I was back and forth. And I heard a voice come in my heart. Flee. Flee. Run. Get out of here. As I was walking to the door, heard a voice say, if you leave out of here today, you'll never come back. You'll never, you'll never have to worry about this again. But you, but you got to overcome this. Amen. It was the same voice I believe Cain heard when God told him, listen, you look, look, sin 
is crouching at your door of Cain. You got to master it. And that was me mastering that demon that was trying to get me back to my past. But it was the word that delivered me. What no magical, it was the word of God. Many times, I remember being a single man. I said a single man. I was single for three years. We didn't just get married. I was single for three years. We wasn't even around each other for three years. Think about what I'm saying. That's why I don't, that's why I don't let y'all cats off the hook because y'all single. I ain't going to accept fornication because you're single. Because I had to walk for three years. She had to walk for three years. And you got to understand, my flesh understood. I knew the feeling. So it ain't like I was no virgin. So I knew what I was missing. And when my flesh got to talking, it was only the word. I, I, I remember coming from my apartment. I used to live on the parkway by myself. Didn't move with no woman, man. And I was, and I was on my way down this, because I still had friends up here in, the, in Clarksdale. I was coming up here. I was going to catch the bus on down the market to my church that was down on Market Street. Walking through the hood. <clears throat> Just walking through. Saw some, and I shouldn't have walked through. Don't go where you used to be. You ain't strong enough. <laughs> I'm walking through. I see some of my old cats. I just stopped posting, hey, what's going on with her? A girl, two girls walked up out of nowhere. Adam just walked up out of nowhere. Told, that this is, told my friend, told my partner, tell State, that's what they used to call him, tell him I, I won't see him now. Out of the blue. I'm saved. They know I'm saved because they saw me preaching. But my flesh. Girl, wasn't ugly. I didn't mess with ugly girls. That's my wife. Wasn't ugly. But and you got to say, I'm single. I'm about a year and a half in. I'm hurting. <laughs> That's why I don't let y'all off the hook cause y'all cause y'all cause y'all cause y'all single. You can keep your you gotta fight. Where you think I got the saying track star from? That's what I heard. Flee, run. That's the word I heard. Run. Now what no trying to, you know, just be cool and cordial now. I said, I was sitting there saying, man, these niggas don't think I'm crazy. But I'm correct. I took off. <laughs> I didn't care. Yes, he who runs and gets away yes, lived to run another day. Yes, I got away. Ran to that bus stop. Got on that bus, went on to church, and <laughs> praised the Lord. I got away. And that's when the Lord hit me with a word, the things you used to do. See, all old things are passed away. So what you doing in this old place? You shouldn't be in this old place because you new now. You got to have new friends, new phone, new house, new hangout, new. It's the only way. You ain't going to get out of, you ain't going to come out of sin still hanging with that. Going where you used to go. Why you going to go around and catch? They smoke weed. You used to smoke weed. Why you going to go smell weed? <laughs> How you gonna not smoke weed and smell weed? You gotta stop going to 4th of July and family picnics and all that. I'm sorry, I'm saved. You know when you say they'll try you? Your people will try you. They'll put that drink right on the table. They'll try to pass it. You, you know you won't hit this. See, you saved. What you doing around that? I'm about to hurt y'all feelings. I ain't coming to no more Christmas. <laughs> I know what I'm talking about. I mean, me and my wife, we tried to be family, be cordial. Went over her people's house for Christmas one year. Oh, cool. Tried to be, didn't want people to think we stuck up. Got over there, man, these Negroes are putting, all kinds of stuff came out on table. I said, uh-uh, it's the last time. I said, last night, I ain't playing no cards, no spades, or nothing. <laughs> I'm, I, we won't be back. I'm saved. I know him. That's what's wrong with you. You say, 
And you keep going around places, and that's why you, you're struggling with God. And you called on top of it. I see you all the time, the Lord dealing with you, but you keep going around people you shouldn't go around. Amen. You got to make a decision. You're going to be a man of God at a young age? Because all you're waiting on is Delilah. You keep on messing around, Delilah going to get you. The Lord love you, but you can't. See, you can't, you can't be using your gift and talent in her and then smoking weed, too. Because eventually Delilah going to get you. That's why I be on my son. They ain't perfect. I know what they be doing. I ain't no fool. They young and they hurt me. They hurt me. But I'm holding them and rebuking them. I'm holding them and rebuking them. I want them to be saved. Say amen. It ain't just them. You old cats have been slipping. They've been slipping for years. It's time to stop. You saved. Just tell them you saved. I'm saved. I don't do that no more. My house is not where you're supposed to come over here no more. Stay out of my house. Amen. Stay off that internet. Amen. Negroes in Panama. Quit shaking my hand, been touching, doing wrong with your hand. That's why I be, I be leery of people's hands now. <laughs> know what you've been doing with your hand. Men have some of the dirtiest hands you got. Dirty hands. Some of y'all with y'all, Delilah. Oh, Lord. You with your Delilah. That's why you're allowed to try to get you away from this church. You, 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 you with her. You're already caught. And you know you're caught. When you're going to stand up and say, I'm just going to go ahead and, and, and serve the Lord, even if I lose it all. You ain't never going to be nothing until you're willing to lose it all for Christ. I ain't going back. I said, I ain't going back. I ain't nothing back there. It's so messed up. Hell, it's messed up now. It's messed up. Half the church got boyfriends. It's messed up. Half of them be living with men, living with women. These brothers living with women. Be up in church like they living up holy hands. No, I don't, I don't, I don't play it because I couldn't do it. I'm glad I didn't lose my conviction. I'm glad the Lord would convict me. I didn't want to get away with nothing. I won't be saved. And I ain't going to be slipping and sliding and Jesus come. I ain't going to be up in there up in somebody's house, strange places I ain't supposed to be. Ain't nobody that cute. Ain't no sex that good. You just got a spirit of lust, and you need to get delivered from lust. I said it's lust. And that's why you can't keep yourself and live for the Lord. Quit fronting about being a Christian and just be honest. Fall on the altar. Get your hands saved. Your hand ain't your girlfriend, Negro. I said it. I be trying to tell these cats, you keep on playing around, Delilah going to catch you. Now Delilah got you. You're caught now. You're in the way of, now you're trying to figure out how to get out. Now the weed and the wheat got to grow up together. Ain't no way out. But go the way of the most high. I mean, he going to use this to break you now. That little girl going to break you. She going to break you till you're totally broken. Till you realize you can't keep on slipping in with God and sliding out. You either going to be with God or not. Y'all heard what I'm saying? Do you hear what I'm saying? You're going to be saved or you're going to be lost. But you got to decide. Me and your mama can't save you. We trying to go on and live our life. We did our job. Lord, stand on your feet. I ain't got upset. I grew up in a time where people were saved. I grew up in a time we had fear of the Lord. We wouldn't even get up and do nothing with, with, with sin in us. Scared? We were so scared. I, the first time I got in the pulpit, I was scared God would strike me down. Love God. Fear him. Revere him. Time to come out and say, play. Y'all free play. Time to be saved. You and your wife, you and your wife shouldn't be no sin partners. I know people go, I know husband and wife, they go out of town to sin. Yeah, they go out of town to sin. Me and my wife ain't gonna be sipping. 
One of us gotta be saved. We don't sip no more. <laughs> we don't creep no more. No, we don't do that. It's called holiness. I said holiness. Ain't y'all tired of hypocrites? No, seriously. I'm tired of hypocrites. Everybody looking for a church saying, I'm tired of hypocrites. But you're a hypocrite too. Just came away from that girl. What are you talking about? Get your flesh under the blood of Jesus. Ask the Lord to deliver you. Get some accountability on that internet. Masturbation is the gateway to being demon possessed. Did you hear what I said? It's a gateway to being demon possessed. It's a gateway. And whenever you keep doing that, you draw on a spirit that eventually gonna possess you. And that's the reason why your lust is the way it is. You can't think right. You can't think, you gotta, he, 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 brother, listen, even the brothers that's married, they married and still masturbating. Got a wife, so don't think if you get married, you ain't gonna have lust. Lust don't leave because you got married. All you're going to do is defile the conscience of your wife by trying to make her fulfill that garbage you into. I said garbage. Because that stuff you watch on the internet, that's whores. That stuff whores do. And because you so full, you don't got so much of that fire in you, you want to take it home and get it fulfilled there. So now you're turning your wife into a whore. That's why her conscience is always feeling funny about it. Then, then we be having counseling sessions, and I'll be hearing these conversations. Well, Pastor, is this wrong? Is that wrong? Why, if you're asking, you already know. Get delivered from lust. Some of y'all ain't never been loved. You don't know what it is for a man to love you without you having to do sexual stuff. That ain't no love. Love is if, if love is if I can't give you nothing. If I can't do nothing for you, you love me anyway. If my body's broke, if I'm paralyzed, if I can't please you, you won't leave me. That's love. You build intimacy. Intimacy's built by conversation. Oh, y'all don't want this. I'm done. I'm done. I said conversation. That means you talk first. Nobody wants you jumping up and down on them. You ain't saying hi. I ain't saying nothing. Then your mama call and y'all don't talk about making cornbread and y'all don't. Heard you, you, that's why. That's why the girl hates your mama. She trying to figure out how can you talk this long to your mama and you come home and, and then then you know about 10 30 let him roll over i said it I, yes i said it in church get delivered from lust now see i'm trying to convict you so you begin to say god deliver me from lust instead of hiding it and until you understand you got to do something about you don't need no smartphone get a flip phone go all the way back to the flip phone. Well, all you need to do is call folks. You can't handle no, no smartphone. Your phone is dirty. That's why I don't be like touching people's phone, bro. I don't be like touching because I don't know where this phone be. If you can't handle it, get rid of it. Go back, get a beeper. <laughs> This technology has made it easy for you to be into pornography. And now that your lust is so great, you're at the place where you start looking. You're ready to fulfill it. The bad thing about this generation, oh my God, you can find anybody anywhere to fulfill it. They all freaky. And you're taking fire in your bosom and you're gonna get burned. And I'm not just talking about these brothers either. Sisters in this pornography, y'all got real computers at home. 
brothers got to go over your house and look at something. Y'all got it. Come out of that stuff. God wants you free. I said it. Ain't no excuse. Ain't no way out. Ain't no justification. Just because you single and lonely, you ain't got to touch yourself. No. I said no. What Christian women doing with sex toys? I said it. I said it in church. What are you doing with that? I said, what are you doing with it? Lord, I done got upset. Single running around with Victoria's Secret. But you, you don't need no secrets. You single. Get you some single draws. Get you some bloomers and some big stuff. What, what you Don't be sexy. And I look in the mirror and tell her, look, don't look, Bird and see the wrong. <laughs> look, you ain't not looking at yourself. Stop. Get you some control tops. Pull them up out. <laughs> because you feed lust. My wife will tell you. My wife said when she went in that store, she, mom, she's spiritual. She went in that store and said, I feel dirty in here. That's where strippers go. Where whores go. I said it. And you as a man, you shouldn't even need all that to be with your woman. Only cat woman, bat woman suit songs. You don't need all that. You should just enjoy your woman. Y'all sisters better stop trying to fulfill this stuff. This is lust. Lust ain't love. It means somebody's using you but don't love you. You got to tell them I ain't no hope. Using my body. Love me. Talk to me. Be with me. Look at me. Because the goal is to lift up holy hands. Come on. Say lift up holy hands. The Bible says. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord but those that have clean hands and a pure heart? That's what we need, men. Clean hands. I said clean hands. You know you clean when your hands are clean. They ain't been in no dirty places. Clean hands. So you need to make a covenant with your hands and your eyes. Y'all hear me, brothers? I'm talking straight to you. Make a covenant with your hands and your eyes that I ain't gonna, I'm not going to touch nothing unclean and I ain't going to look at nothing unclean. That's the covenant between me and the Most High. And if you're truly struggling, listen to me, I'm being straightforward. If you're truly struggling, don't have pride, brother. Talk to your woman. Be honest with her. Because Satan works in secret. Tell them, I'm struggling. I've been struggling for a long time. I'm struggling. Let her know. Now, if the brother tell you that, don't think you want the woman to try to fulfill that stuff. You ain't, because, you, girl, you can't compete against no fantasy. It's a fantasy. What I've said in the last 10 minutes is more than you heard in your whole life. I'm trying to tell you, you can't compete. It's just like you trying to compete against another woman. You can't compete against no another person. That's lust. The Bible said lust is never satisfied. So you're not going to you're not going to think, well if I well if I do this he ain't going to want that. You you crazy. That's a spirit behind what he's doing. That's a devil. And he got to get delivered from that devil. And so do you. Hallelujah. That's what you need to hear in church. All this Moses crossed the Red Sea and Michael rode the boat ashore. No. Get your hands clean. Hallelujah. You old folks, get off the internet. Yeah. You know, old folks, it's as fast as HIV rate is old, old people, elderly. You know why? They got a hold to the internet. Oh, Lord. Didn't know that was on there, Lord. Oh. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Oh, I should look at, oh. 
<laughs> Still looking. Just because you're old don't mean you ain't got lust in you. Did y'all hear what I said? Get you account. Get somebody that you can that can hold you accountable. Get somebody in your life you trust that you can talk to and be accountable. And be honest. Tell them where you at for real. If you got a wife or a husband, that's who you should be talking to. If you're single, find somebody who ain't lustful and, and, and ain't of the opposite sex. And make sure they ain't gay. <laughs> and be honest. <laughs> Accountability is how you break stuff. I said it. In church. I'm done. I ain't got no altar call. I'm done. Ain't no altar call nothing. Clean up your hands. Clean up your hands. Did y'all hear what I said? Clean up your hands. Come on, lift your hands to the Lord. We'll pray. Pray for clean hands. Lord, we repent for using our hands. Stop. Stop playing. Lift your hands. We all need to pray. It's a curse of lust. It's what destroyed your daddy. It's what destroyed your mama. Destroyed all, your whole family. Curses of lust. Unchecked lust. That we thought was normal. Because videos and hip hop told us it was normal. Stuff, it's video stuff. Hip hop ain't nothing but pornography now. I want clean hands. When I lift my hands, I want the Lord to receive my worship. I don't want him looking down on me saying, oh, you're tainted, son. You're tainted. Lift your hands to the Lord. Father, we want clean hands. Forgive us for where our hands have been. Forgive us for doing things we shouldn't do, watching things, looking at stuff we shouldn't have looked at. Forgive us for stirring up lust in our own heart. Forgive my eyes for watching pornography, for being a voyeur. Forgive us, God. Forgive us for the stuff we read, the pornographic stuff we read. Forgive us for keeping the door open. Forgive us for masturbation. Forgive us for the lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh. Forgive us for taking our bodies where we shouldn't have took them, places we went we shouldn't have went. Forgive us, Father. For we want to be clean. I don't want to live this life this long and be disqualified at the finish line. Forgive us. Forgive us for using our wives wrong. Forgive us for using our husbands wrong. Forgive us for lusting them, objectifying them instead of loving them. Forgive us for, 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 for choosing lust over intimacy. Father, we repent. Repent as a people. You desire holiness. For you said without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Father, I want to see you. Come too far not to see you. Come too far to miss you. I said I want to see you. So I'd rather give up all of this sin to see you. Come on, lift your hands. Come on, ask him to cleanse your heart. Cleanse my heart, God. Forgive me for all the stuff I was even in before I was saved. People I was with. Stuff I got into. Demons I picked up along the way. Forgive me for that. Forgive me for the open door that I opened. All them illicit relationships. I never even repented of them. I repent of them. Forgive me. I ask for you to cleanse me. Let your blood set me free. From the curses of lust. From the curses of perversion. Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. 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 Come on, in Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, do better than that. He's better than that. You could have died in your sin. You could have died and went to hell in your sin. You ought to have a better praise. He could have killed you while you was fornicating. You ought to have a better praise. Thank God he didn't kill me when I was sinning. I got a better praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.